In this video, I want to introduce you to Octopus Sequencer and show you some of the basic things that it can do. Now, the concept of Octopus Sequencer was developed after I read an interview with Marco Miniman where he explained some of the concepts that he was working on. Now, these are things like separating your body, so you would take your left hand and your left foot as one side and your right hand and your right foot as the other side. And then he would do things like play a paradiddle between his left hand and his left foot against a double paradiddle with his right hand and his right foot. So I want to show you how you can program that into Octopus Sequencer really quickly and easily. So I'm going to use Sequencer 1 and I'm going to put a hi-hat, pedaled hi-hat, there we go, and a snare drum. So basically I'm just clicking in these number boxes and using the up and down arrow keys and it tells me what the sound source is. So I'm going to draw a paradiddle in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight notes long. And you'll see this purple bar at the top is telling me that this sequencer is going to loop after eight beats. And you set that in here. So if I put this number up, you can see that this length of the purple bar increases. So if I hit play now, it repeats after 27 beats. If I set it to eight, then it's just gonna repeat this section. So there we have a paradiddle programmed in between the hi-hat and the snare drum. I'm gonna mute this for a second, come down to sequencer two, and in here we have kick, and I'm gonna set this to floor tom, let's put high floor tom. And here I'm going to draw in a double paradiddle. So foot, right, foot, right, foot, foot, and then right, foot, right, foot, right, right. So you can see that the double paradiddle is actually 12 notes long. So I'm going to set the length to 12 and play this by itself. So that's a double paradiddle between the bass drum and the floor tom. So if we play these together, you get this resulting pattern. Which I agree sounds kind of messy, <laughs> but um, it lets you know what it's going to sound like. Let me just set the length of these two sequences to zero. And then we can focus on these two playheads. So you can see that the playheads move along and in sequencer one, after eight steps, it jumps back to the beginning. But in sequencer two, it's still got four steps to go. So these two go out of sync at the beginning, and it takes a few times for them to come back into sync. Now we can mark the resolve point, which is where both playheads hit one at the same time, by turning up the resolve volume over here. And by default, it's set to a crash symbol. So this will play a crash whenever these hit one at the same time, which is basically where the overall pattern will repeat. And then you can see the counters here. This tells you which repeat this is on. It calculates the first time round how many of the double paradiddle are going to be played. So you can see it's got a total of two. Repeat one repeat two. And up here you can see that the paradiddle is playing three times for two of the double paradiddle diddle. So I can bring the volume of that down so we can focus on the paradiddle. Or I can bring the volume of that down and we can focus on the double paradiddle. So that's the basic concept of Octopus Sequencer, that you have four individual step sequences and for each one you can change the repeat length. Now there are lots of other things you can do. So let's clear these sequences and I'm going to draw in a songo groove across the four sequences. So I'm going to put a ride bell up here. So if I set this length to 16, then we have a quarter note right bell. Mm -hmm. 
Now we don't actually have to draw in all four notes because they are four sixteenth notes apart. So instead of doing that, I could set the length to four and it's playing the same thing, but just using one note. So I can delete these. So down here on sequence of three, I'm gonna program in the kick pattern, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight note pattern. Sounds like this. And then on sequence two, I'm going to program in the snare drum pattern. Now I'm going to use two lines of the sequencer so that we can have ghosted and accented snare. So I'm turning down the bottom line. So we're gonna have one, e, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, so it's going to be a 16 note pattern. So I want one there. So that's a kind of songo groove. And then down here on the bottom sequencer, I'm going to program in a clave. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'm going to put that on a cowbell. And that's also going to be a 16 note pattern. So now we have a songo groove over a clave. So you can see that if you wanted to change the ride cymbal pattern so that it was playing a kind of 16th note thing, we could do a similar thing here. Let's set that to ride cymbal and draw in the and a, ah, and then we have this. So it's really easy to change things very quickly like that. So what I wanted to show you in this example was how to use the displacement field. So each sequencer has a displacement field here. And if you change the number in that, so at the moment it's zero, which means that this is gonna start at the beginning. If I put this up to one, you see this little yellow line move across and that says it's gonna start one beat later. If I put it up to two, it will start two beats later. So let me put it two beats later, so it's now going to start on the three, and this will sound like this. So now the ride cymbal is playing on the offbeat eighth note. If I put it up to three, it will sound like this. So you can see it's very easy to move this around and come up with different grooves. Let's try the same thing with the clave. Let's displace it by three notes and see what the clave sounds like if you start it here. So you can see by changing the displacement for each of these step sequences, you can come up with hundreds if not thousands of different grooves. So let's just try changing the snare drum displacement and I'm gonna to go to minus four. So you can see that the yellow line has come four beats back, so that's gonna start here. So already we have grooves that you probably wouldn't come up with unless you actually sat down and wrote these things out. And by using octopus sequence, you can hear what they sound like very quickly, and then you can decide whether or not you want to practice them and learn to play them. Okay, now I want to show you how you can program a kind of Billy Cobham fill using octopus sequencer. So this fill is basically a 16th note single stroke roll between the right hand and the left hand. So to begin with, I'm going to program that in using sequence of one and sequence of two. So we're gonna set the length of both of those sequences to two. And let me play these on the snare drum. So that sounds like this. Okay, simple. Right, left, right, left, right, left. So a thing that Billy Cobham used to do a lot was play a single stroke roll and move his right hand around three sound sources, for example, snare and then rack tom and then floor tom, and the left hand between two sound sources, maybe the snare and the rack tom. So in order to do that, 
instead of drawing in snare, rack tom, floor tom up here, which would mean I'd have to use three lines of this and draw in three notes, I'm going to use something called top line. Now, top line basically takes anything that's played on the top line of each sequencer and assigns the sound to something that you set in top line settings. So the first thing you need to do is actually route sequencer one to top line. And you do that down here in the routing panel. So I'm going to route sequencer one and sequencer two to top line, and I'm going to unroute them from the drums. So now you can see we have top line settings available here. So I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to clear all, and I'm going to choose a snare drum by finding it on here and click to add selected note. And you can see that it's now been added. The MIDI note has been added to the pitch list and we can see that that corresponds to acoustic snare. So then I want to find the rack tom and then I'm going to add it, get added to the list and then floor tom. Click to add to the list. So now we have a three note sequence, which is going to be played sequentially every time this note is triggered. Whoops, let me mute this one for a second. So that's the right hand part. So for the left hand part, I want to clear all and program in a snare drum and then a rack tom. Let's do the same one. So now the left hand part by itself is just cycling between snare drum and rack tom. When you put them together, you get the Billy Cobham fill. So if you wanted to make that more complicated, you could add an extra drum to the right hand. Let's in fact put a ride cymbal in. Add that to the list. So now the right hand is playing a four note pattern. And let's make the left hand play a three note pattern. So let's go acoustic snare, high tom, and then let's find the hi hat. There we go, we'll use that one. So the left hand is playing a three note pattern. So let's hear those together. Something else you can do in the top line, let's change this back to a length of one for a second so it's going to play 16th notes on its own. So I'm going to clear the pitch list and I'm going to set the notes for the left hand, right hand, kick and hi-hat in here. So the left hand is already set to electric snare, right hand is set to ride cymbal. And here we have accent values and tap volumes. So in the pitch list, you can actually type in rudiments. So I'm going to type in a paradiddle and I'm going to use capital letters for accents. So right and then space left, space right, space right, space left, space right, space left, space left. So that's an accented paradiddle. Hit enter and then hit space. So now you can hear a paradiddle played between the right hand and the left hand using the source's ride symbol and electric snare with these velocities. So if you want to bring the accents down, or the taps up, or you could just mute the right hand part and hear what the left hand half of a paradiddle sounds like, or vice versa. You can also type in flams, so RF is right flam and LF is left flam. That's a bit fast for that. Let's uh, go back in here and set the length to four. And now we should hear flams. And you can also see that when you're in this view, the R, L, K and H flash down here to show you what's being played. So let's put in a flam paradiddle. So that would be uh, right flam, left, right, right, left flam, right, left, left. Okay, so if we want to set the right hand to be a snare, we choose 
the snare from here and click it. That's acoustic snare and we can choose the left hand to be acoustic snare too. And again, you can mute one of the hands. So that's the left hand part of a flam power diddle. Let's put the tempo up. And you'll notice that this is triggering every fourth note. So you could actually, let's put the right hand back to a ride symbol. Okay, and then we'll change this length to three. Now this note will play every third note. So that's a slightly faster power diddle. But what you can also do is set this to be a long pattern and just draw in notes in random places and it will play them in the flam power diddle order. Not that you would have any real cause to do that, but that's the kind of thing that you can do with this. So there are many possibilities with this. You could program in rudiments and hear them over a groove that you've programmed in the sequencer. You can also put melodies and pitches in. At the moment, these are rooted to drums on the top line, but you can also root them to pitch. So if I root sequencer one to pitch, then we're hearing something pretty horrible, a power diddle, but let's clear this and we can add the C major scale. And that's cycling and you can put in whatever notes you want in what order you can also change the velocities we can have uh, a minimum a maximum velocity and some steps and this will play these velocities so you could for example set three steps and have two of them as zero volume and one of them as maximum volume and that will play only every third note draw some velocities in and in that kind of way you can start to hear different polyrhythms and you can do all sorts of clever things.